I am the light. I am the light. But you can only find me when you're searching deep inside. I am the light. I shine in every corner, even in your darkest times. I am the light evolving in you now. I am the light. I am the light. But you can only find me when you're searching deep inside. I am the light. I shine in every corner, even in your darkest times. I am the light evolving in you now. I am the light. This is a song that came to me last week. Sometime last week, I recorded it. And it was very interesting because today I talked about page 464, I think it was. That was talking about darkness being the ignorance and light being the knowledge. And then it's like everything happens for a reason and everything comes like right when it's supposed to come. So after that, they connected me to this song. It was a little challenging at first. But then I got it. I think I got it. I'm going to get it. I'm going to sing it again. I got to get on beat. Before I sing it again. I am the light. Oh, I changed the tune. Here we go. I am the light. But you can only find me when you're searching deep inside. I am the light. I shine in every corner, even in your darkest times. I am the light evolving in you now. I am the light. So that was just a reminder. They were reminding me of who I am. I am the light. We are in some very interesting, challenging, wonderful, fantastic times. And there's a lot of fear permeating the earth right now. One of the fears that people are experiencing are some of the shifts and some of the things that, uh, you know, powers and other governments and other universe are uh, utilizing the things that they've created and put it in, putting it out on the world like CERN. Today is July 5th, and this is why I was called to do this session today. I was inspired because I came in here in the lair and I was like, all right, you, you always get a feeling when the universe wants to talk to you, when Yahweh, the most high Allah wants to communicate. And so today it communicated to me with page seven, page 733. Was it 7.33? Okay, no, it was actually... Oh, it's not how it's getting in the tools. Okay, all right, yeah. No, it was 7.31. Yeah, it was page 7.31. 7.31 through 7.33, that's what I meant. I'm going to have to change that on the, on the label. But I'm going to read to you guys what it says. And then we're going to talk a little bit about what's going on in the world right now. So, I did my usual shuffling. I came in and something said, open the book. Get a message. See what it's saying. I put the Herkimer diamonds in my pocket. And I searched and I searched. And then it said, stop. And I opened up and my eyes went directly to page 731. And it says, toward the end of Revelation, we find words of great wisdom that support 
what we have attempted to convey to the reader. Oh, if I didn't say it. This is from A Metaphysical Interpretation of the Bible by Stephen L. Harefield. This was an impromptu Bible study, y'all. This is um, July 5th, 2022. And 731, second paragraph, reads, Toward the end of Revelation, we find words of great wisdom that support what we have attempted to convey to the reader. It is a soothing balm that reflects the benevolence of the creator and brings joy to the heart. Revelation 21, verse 1 through 7. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth passed away, and there is no longer any sea. 2. And I saw the holy city, New, Jeru new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, made ready as a bride adorned for her husband. 3. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is among men, and he shall dwell among them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be among them. 4. And he shall wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there shall no longer be any death. There shall no longer be any mourning or crying or pain. The first things have passed away. 5. And he who sits on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. And he said, Write, for these words are faithful and true. 6. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give to the one who thirsts from the spring of the water of life without cost. 7. He who overcomes shall inherit these things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. Before we offer its metaphysical interpretation, allow us one more quote. It is quite significant because it is related to the other attribute of God. It speaks of the feminine aspect about which we have devoted much time in this work. Revelation 21, verse 9 through 11. Come here, I shall show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. 10. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. 11. Having the glory of God, her brilliance was like a very costly stone, as a stone of crystal clear jasper. Let us study the above together so that we can all come to the realization that it is all very genuine and it is indeed coming into our reality. It is something that each of us is able to achieve in a very real and tangible sense. With all religious beliefs aside, it is a long and interesting journey and it will surely come upon us. Let us begin with the first verse. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth passed away, and there is no longer any sea. When we read the words passed away, we first think of death or dying, but it is not the intent of the metaphor. Does a snake pass away after shedding its skin? The answer is no, not at all. For it is a simple growth process for the reptile. The same applies for the above allegory. As we have indicated earlier, we will operate from a new and different perspective, one of more divine nature that will automatically give us a new outlook on life and the creator. The last part of the verse is not to be taken literally either. Consider this. If there were no sea, would there be life as we know it? The answer is also no. Not to mention 
the potential great climatic changes that would take place. The truth is that throughout the Bible, water in the majority of cases has been more concerned with soul spirit because of its very fluid nature. In a metaphysical sense, the disappearance of the sea symbolizes our unconditional unification with the soul. There will no longer be any separation and oneness with energy and form will be our only realization. The next verse reads, And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, made ready as a bride adorned for her husband. We have confirmed the metaphysical definition of Jerusalem, dwelling place of peace or constitution of harmony, on several occasions. In this context, it appears that a new harmony or harmonic will take place. It is verified by the use of the words bride and husband. The final union of masculine and feminine energies in a new divine coexistence. We return to the original idea of God within, known for all time as Yahweh. The body and the soul are now one and the same. The next sentence carries, carries it a bit further. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is among men, and he shall dwell among them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be among them. The tabernacle and the throne both depict the human. The statement that God will be within and among men absolutely confirms the dawn of the new age of life. It is simply God consciousness awakened in the human and alive with divine energy. Let us assure the reader that this is indeed something that is already here and has been since creation. However, we have not been ready for it due to the higher vibrations that are associated with divine mind. We are simply awakened to it, and as it has often been stated, we are alive but dead, awake but asleep. This will simply no longer be the case as we will become fully illumined. We will become one people with a full spiritual orientation. We know this because in Revelations 22 verse 5, we read, Because the Lord I am, God shall illumine them. I'm going to say that again. Revelation 22 verse 5, we read, because the Lord, I am, God, shall illumine them. Finally, let us rejoice with the words of Revelation 21, verse 7. He who overcomes shall inherit these things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. I and my Father are one. At last, it is extended to all of us, or at least to those that are willing to work within themselves and the higher vibrations that are now arriving in our world. The key is to overcome the lower pulls that seem to be in control of us at each turn of the road. Our achievement becomes the final unification of soul and form, creating the ideal living, breathing, thinking, the divine I am. It is joyfully expressed in the next verse, having the glory of God, her brilliance was like a very costly stone as a stone of crystal clear jasper. It is the blessed merger as the wedding takes place in the lives of those that traveled the journey of life seeking truth, love, peace, mercy, and the divine creative principle. God and goddess together once more create life in each moment. The Bible is not a book to be read with the left brain function, but rather with the creative spiritual thinking of the right brain and higher mind. Of course, it is abstract, esoteric thinking, and most of us do not want to plunge into, plunge into the task, into that task, because it is seemingly difficult. Yet, it is not if it is. 
See, this is when I know that I started reading too much because I start getting to the fumbling. Okay, of course it is abstract, esoteric thinking, and most of us do not want to plunge into that task because it is seemingly difficult, yet it is not if it is processed by a more relaxed mind. A relaxed mind is one that is not bound by traditional dogma set in place by humans. It is a mind free of fear. This style of thinking would be the true seat of spiritual growth for all of us to enjoy. We would learn more about life and what it has to offer, and we would certainly learn more about our real inner nature, developing the power to work with our spiritual aspect. If we were to allow for just a few moments of inner reflection, we would realize the true depth and nature of life, including our own. We have encountered many tribulations in the course of this book, and the struggles portrayed in Revelation are a very personal matter in our growth. To gain the knowledge, we must strike out on our own and not strive to be like everyone else. We are individuals, one of a kind. We must, in, we must journey through our experiences and we will do it alone no matter who may be around. Ache. It doesn't say Ache. I'm saying Ache. Ironically, we do this with each and every moment in very tiny increments, consciously or unconsciously. Eventually, these tiny increments catch up to us as the new human shines forth. Old beliefs are difficult to release to new understanding. But if we are diligent and work with the new concepts and beliefs, we would become God-realized. What we have shown in Revelation is a process of time as we know it, and the shift is upon us in these increments. As the Bible tells us, if it were applied all at once, it would be overpowering. This is not to say that it will not be instantaneous, because it can occur in the blinking of an eye. Ultimately, spirit will, will descend upon us and realization will take us by surprise. Regardless, the truth will be revealed. As is true in all beliefs originated in the external world of religion, they have become too strong a conviction with very little flexibility and everyone stating that they are right. It becomes ingrained in all those involved, not allowing for the faith of the mustard seed and the enlightenment of our own divine spiritual nature. The message is that churches have usurped the concept of God, even if God is certainly more important than the church. With this seemingly, fl this seemingly flawed notion offered through scriptural literus literalism, we are considered wrong if we do not believe as they do. God did create individual identity along with life. It did this so we could choose our path to higher consciousness independently. The creator wanted us to find our higher self by following our own path without becoming ensnared in another's. In another's. Nevertheless, the human created the church to represent God, and so went the individual nature we all have. The dragon of the purely physical ego, led by the overpowering sense system, will surely devour the spiritual nature of the human form, and our inner war will continue. We will be tormented until it is extracted by releasing the grip of the lower carnal nature, as Revelation suggests. This is going to occur in one form or another, and it is up to us to choose our experience in it, for the universe will not be denied in its evolutional process. We are unable to stop growth and forward movement in life. We may only create anew, and never may we uncreate what we have brought forth. 
The best that we may hope to do is to shift what we created in a new direction. May our journey be in peace and love and may you release by simple and may your release be simple and easy. Ache, ache. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Stephen L. Harefield, PhD, for this book and for this message today. Let me tell you that you guys have been a witness of my experience becoming an infinitaire minister. And throughout the journey, I've had lots of questions. I have lots of questions. I ask those questions, and those questions come forth quite easily through my mind, through God that just pours the information into my mind. One of the messages that I got before I opened up to these pages, to page 731 of a metaphysical interpretation of the Bible, 731 through 734. And what had come to me before was the realization that it was up to me and my mission with Infinite Air Ministries to transform and transmute the energy of what they, the powers that were, and the mass population have given to the word religion and church. So it is part of my mission to help people recognize that religion is the study of something that you believe in, something that you have great faith in that is above yourself, beyond yourself, what you may call God, a force, a source. And so the dedication and that study of that becomes a religion. Just like when somebody is practicing music, then that becomes their religion is music. And they're so dedicated and um, determined and consistent with that. And so that's what religion is. And church, well, the church is said it right there. The church is God. The church is inside of us. We are the church. Wherever we are, God is. And so this is the church. And so it came into my experience to a full circle of realizing this concept and this shift in me in a physical manner to where I actually now have documents, bylaws, uh, proclamations that state my mission and purpose here as the I minister at Infinite Air Ministries. And it's so interesting because for the longest time, I didn't want to have anything to do with religion or church because I was mad. Like I wasn't fooling with that. Like I, I, my whole life was about that. So to think that I would be in this space now, it was like, you know, when I first got invited to do a ministry, I, I, I still had the old mindset of the old world, right? So I wasn't thinking that I, that that was me. And then I had to be shown that it is me and that it's always been me. And not only is it me, but it's you too. It's every single one of us. And so when I came back and I, and I came in here today and I opened up to these pages that said exactly what I needed to know so that I can continue to move forward in my journey of my religion of myself and the expansion of my church and the, and the light being that light myself. And it made sense with the song, I am the light but you can only find me when you're searching deep inside. I am the light. I shine in every corner, even inside your darkest times. I am the light evolving in you now. I am the light. The other song that always came, that I always sing, and it started in 2013 when I got that message about gratitude and being grateful. So I want to end it 
with the song of gratitude because I am so grateful for this message. I'm actually going to share this message with all of you guys here at the Master Vibration 13 layer and beyond. We have this metaphysical Bible study that's happening every week inside the private alliance of the Master Vibration 13.com self healing church. Well, actually, I said that wrong. It is Master Vibration 13 self healing layer church of self mastery. That is what we are, that is what we do. You can come there by coming to Master Vibration 13. Dot com. There is so much more in store. It is a whole new world and we are creating it right now in this moment. I just got reminded that I need to address the other reason why I had to share this with you guys today. Today is July 5th, um, 2022, and it was reported somewhere. Well, in many ways, it was reported about the CERN machine that is being opened up and there's a lot of different things that are going around as to what's going to happen once that CERN is um, put into effect. Well, I will tell you this, that the powers that were are doing absolutely everything in their power to stop this shift and to control it. But they cannot, they will not, And there is nothing to fear because you have to recognize that this transformation that is happening in the world right now is a transformation that is inevitable. And it is, this time is here, the Aquarian age, the golden age, that time is here. And in the process of that time, some people will transition. There will be babies, there will be old people, there will be young people, there will be new people, there will be fetuses, all in transition and transformation for this great shift. So it's important to recognize what it is. It's important to keep your vibration as high as possible and be able to celebrate each moment because no moment is promised to any of us. And we know that's real because transformation, what they call death, is inevitable. It's part of life and it is a beautiful part of life, but we have been programmed to believe that it's awful and that there's just no coming back from it. But see, we're infinionaires. We are eternal, infinite beings. So we are forever all the time. We are our ancestors coming back. We turn into deities, gods, and angels and different forms of energy that are that's everlasting and forever. And we're coming to that truth now. You know, some of us have been aware for a while, but it is just such a beautiful thing to witness how many people have awakened to this truth and the deeper truth that it's all inside of you. It's all inside of us all the time. It's always been there. It will always be there. So there's no rush. There's no rush and there is nothing to fear. Your sensitivities have heightened. All of us, all of our sensitivities have heightened. Do not be afraid of them because you are not given more than you can handle. So everything bit by bit, and it's your experience that makes it go fast or slow. You're the driver. You're the master. So you're the, you're the one that's going to decide how fast or slow it's going to go. Later on this week, I'm going to be opening up a page on the Hermetic Principles as promised in the private study of yourself. Because I want to make it clear of what all of these books and all of these different symbols all have in common and why they're becoming so clear at this time. So when I look at a metaphysical interpretation of the Bible by Stephen L. Harefield, I definitely felt the creative principle of it from the beginning. And um, the green, I mean, that definitely worked in my heart chakra. As soon as I opened it, I felt it. I felt like I was talking to myself and not in any conceit, but more so by the recognition that 
we are all connected and there's a lot of thought patterns and words and different things that we say that are not just from us. They're from lifetimes of programming. They're just from lifetimes of receiving that information and then it starts to just come out organically. You know, and if it's uh, information that has really uh, stuck into our root chakra, then it's really going to come out. In other lifetimes, it'll come out, the information. And so this is what's happening now. So a metaphysical interpretation of the Bible really gives you that divine feminine aspect of it. The Kabbalion gives you a great balance of both, but it, it it's such a balance and strength of both that it's almost... Uh, it's almost genderless, if that makes sense. It's it's like it talks about the the male power and the divine feminine in equality, you know, because gender is in everything. So there is no greater than when it comes to gender, and that's why it is in all of us. But of course, in the traditional world, in the old world, right? They had us thinking that one is better. Men are better or women are better. Battle of the sexes, you know, boys versus girls. You know, it was always that that was a constant that has been a constant. And so that was done purposely so people could forget who they are so that they could not remember the whole idea of homosexuality. And that that whole situation was brought into this plane so that we could recognize the oneness in gender, you know, but it has been. Um, man, it has been turned into something really awful and really pornographic and really it has been sexualized to um, a physical form of sex and that was never the intention for this expression to be revealed in this lifetime. And it's okay because everything is being exploited. Women are being exploited. Men are being exploited. Animals are being exploited. Like everything is happening out there and the only salvation is you. You and your choice and your mind and deciding to choose yourself at all times so that you can get the solutions because nobody out there is going to tell you. Nobody out there is going to give you, people are going to keep giving you their truth, their truth, their expression of it, their perception of it. And there's one thing that we read in this book just now, and that was the importance of your identity. This is another confirmation that came for me. Because Infinionaire, Infinionaire is a person that attracts wealth infinitely because they live in their passion. Infinionaire is not a group of people. Infinionaire is an individual being that recognizes the power in themselves and recognize the power that they have when they connect to the all, to that source. And when they have that connection and when they have that realization and that recognition, then everything comes together and the tribes come and they will come. They always come. But you have to be ready for them. So if you're feeling alone at this time, you're not. You're never alone. It's impossible for you to be alone in this universe. The feeling of loneliness comes through because it's time to be with ourselves so that we can gain clarity on how our bodies function so that we can move swiftly during this shift that is happening with or without our consent. I wasn't planning on staying here for too long at all. So I'm just going to go ahead and close it out with my gratitude song that came to me in 2013 when I started this journey of myself. And um, it was, well, actually the journey of myself started in 2010, but it became very clear in 2013. And that's when I had to do, when I had to be with myself so that I could get clearer understanding of me. The metaphysical interpretation of the Bible came years later in 2017. And then the, um, the, um, hermetic principles came in 2022 when I was ordained. And so it was, it's been just a powerful reflection. And let me just take a sip of this water. They're telling me that I need to go ahead and wrap it up. So I'm wrapping it up. Before, <laughs> when I said when I first got the message of this song, I still I was just in the midst of experiencing past lifetimes. So in singing this song, and the more I sang it, the more 
uh, memory I would get of the lifetimes that I existed in. I am thankful, thankful for my life. I am so grateful, grateful for my experiences in all of my lifetimes. Ache, ache, adios.